United Nations gave Saddam Hussein a final chance to cooperate in 2002, sending Swedish diplomat Hans Blix to bring a close to the weapons inspection process. After 60 days, he returned from Iraq and gave his assessment. Iraq appears not to have come to a genuine acceptance, not even today, of the disarmament which was demanded of it and which it needs to carry out to win the confidence of the world and to live in peace. Fifty nations endorsed the use of force to end the regime of Saddam Hussein. More than 30 volunteered personnel for the campaign. France, Germany and Russia, among Saddam Hussein's largest trading partners, fought to prevent the conflict. On March 20, 2003, the United States, Britain and their allies invaded Iraq. It took just three weeks and 150 American lives to drag down the edifice of Saddam Hussein's regime. It was the newest twist in a growing Washington game. The race to claim that the war in Iraq was dishonestly sold. It played out in the musical chairs of American journalism. The Iraq war is a diversion, it cried, a distraction from the war on terror. Bush had misled the nation about Iraq's WMD. He falsely claimed that there were links between Saddam and Al-Qaeda. Was there any connection between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda? Were they cooperating? No. Was Iraq supporting Al-Qaeda? No. Actually reporting on the Iraq-Al-Qaeda connection predates um, the arguments that we've heard from the Bush administration. The Clinton administration, for instance, included an Iraq-Al-Qaeda connection in its sealed indictment of Osama bin Laden in the spring of 1998. In the four years since the inspectors left, intelligence reports show that Saddam Hussein has worked to rebuild his chemical and biological weapons stock, his missile delivery capability, and his nuclear program. He has also given aid, comfort, and sanctuary to terrorists, including Al-Qaeda members. Mr. Hayes' articles have documented connections between Iraq and Al-Qaeda, stretching back to the earliest days of the terror network. Intelligence agents and news networks regularly cited those connections during the years of the Clinton administration. ABC News has learned that in December, an Iraqi intelligence chief named Farouk Hijazi, now Iraq's ambassador to Turkey, made a secret trip to Afghanistan to meet with bin Laden. Three intelligence agencies tell ABC News they cannot be certain what was discussed. But almost certainly, they say, bin Laden has been told he would be welcome in Baghdad. A peace rally in Washington. We use the term peace loosely. The message here was anything but. When I went to see some of the anti-war demonstrations and there were representations of the US flag with a swastika on it or perhaps the president with a little moustache or um, things of this kind, it, it made me feel a quarter of a century younger, in a, but in an optically pleasant way. No black fight! By the time of the big mobilizations against the war in Iraq, the leadership group of the Stop the War Coalition was an, an outfit with the deceptive name of International Answer. Uh, this is a front for a very nasty little sect that I remember very well called the Workers' World Party, which is best known for its sponsorship of um, uh, the ridiculous figure of Ramsey Clark. We, the peoples of the planet, we, the peoples of the nations of the earth, are going to have to stand up in permanent unity and stop war. The Workers' World Party takes the view that North Korea 
uh, the Serbian Socialist Party and the Iraqi Ba'ath Party are part of an anti-imperialist Workers and People's Front. They, they are in favor of these regimes. Mr. Clark has also volunteered to defend in court the genocidaires, the, the mass murderers of the, the Tutsi and the moderate Hutu in Rwanda. Uh, they're a pretty reliable group. They're outright, openly pro-fascist. Those who went along not knowing have to be pitied. One is sorry for them. Uh, they're the sort of people that Orwell described, the sort of hopeless, sandal-wearing, vegetarian, harmless twits. Three short years, with two short wars, the United States and its allies have liberated more than 50 million people from two of the world's most repressive regimes. America and her allies are fighting for women's rights, minority rights, and political freedom in both those lands. I think the Bush administration has largely been disarmed in the war of ideas. I think in part that is because of this failure on its part to be as candid as they need to be about the distinction between Islamists and Muslims. And that failure to confront America's true enemies can be doubly dangerous, say many of those sympathetic to America's goals in the Middle East. American popular culture, they warn, can fill that void in dangerous ways. They point to Michael Moore, a filmmaker hailed by Hollywood in 2001. Two years later, Mr. Moore looked at the conflict in Iraq and saw a very different world than most analysts of the region. Cliff Kincaid is the editor of Accuracy in Media. Michael Moore on his own website had compared the Iraqi terrorists killing our own troops to our ancestors in the Revolutionary War. Back to Iraq. These are the men of Three Commando Royal Marines. They guard the critical port of Umm Qasr, Iraq's economic lifeline to the world. The, the immediate aim was to secure the oil infrastructure, uh, which of course the, the future prosperity of this, uh, of this country depends on, and that, that was achieved successfully. The British government has pledged nearly a billion dollars in aid to the people of southern Iraq. The British army has established local councils to replace the tyranny of the Ba'ath Party. They've rebuilt homes, schools, hospitals. It mirrors the far larger and far more difficult fight being waged by American forces in central and northern Iraq. What do you think of America and the British and what they're doing? They are feeding Iraq now. Iraq and the Iraqi people. They lost too much blood for our freedom. And for that we are very thankful. They've built bridges, water supplies, uh, power plants, they have just finished reviving uh, the school texts that were 50 years outdated. We've been playing patty cake with these insurgents. We have not begun to do offensive operations. And uh, the world will see that when we do. The battle for Fallujah. In November 2004, the United States Marine Corps launched a huge offensive and stormed the city, a major stronghold of the insurgency in Iraq. Dozens of Marines died in the fight, and more than a thousand insurgents were killed. Fallujah revealed some important truths about the battle for Iraq. America's enemies were not the freedom fighters lionized by some of those on the American left. Instead, the U.S. Marines faced a hornet's nest of murderers, kidnappers, and religious fanatics. 